Hey guys, Bob here. Welcome back to the Coach Travel with Bob Piercy podcast. I'm really excited today. Today, my guest is Alex Jade. Alex, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me, Bob. So Alex, you are a locally um, based, uh, local Edmonton artist who specializes in hand-painted murals. Um, I've known you for, for a while now. We actually met back in the gym and I've always thought you had a cool story and you're one of these people doing your own thing. Um, yeah, like, please, like, what are you, what are you doing and uh, how did you get into this whole crazy world? Yeah, so I mean, my name's Alex, like you said. I run my own company, so I paint hand-painted murals for corporate and commercial companies and private homes, so anything from you know, large scale developers to someone that wants their basement painted and, you know, a theme of some sort. So everything in between, um, I work for like Amazon, Lululemon, uh, Rogers place, like the NHL arena. Um, yeah. So and what what's I, the largest <laughs> thing you've painted to date? What is the biggest um, thing? So the largest painting I've done is 70 feet by 24 feet. And you can find that one in Edmonton. Um, so it's on a new building called Manchester square. That's kind of a little bit north of downtown and it looks like old Amsterdam buildings. So yeah, I did a massive mural on the side of it. It's been really popular on social media. A lot of, a lot of people taking photos in front of it, which is great. And that's the, you know, big, one of the big points about it. So. so and actually real quick, you, you just said social media. Real, uh, what is, what are your handles right now? Where can people find you? Yeah. So my Instagram um, is at Alexandra Jade. So A-L-I-X-A-N-D-R-A and then Jade, J-A-D-E. And then, uh, website is alexanderj.ca so my name spelled a little bit different so just alex with an i um so i mean even if you forget it and you just google alexander jade um even with the word art after it it should <laughs> pop up so yeah and then you, we'll definitely we'll make sure we, we plug in you know include the social media handles at the end of the show again but just i wanted to do this now because you know in case someone's you know you know has time to check out your your social media while we're actually having this conversation i thought it'd be kind of neat for them to be able to do that please if you're driving and listening to this don't check out her artwork just yet check it out once you uh, can do so safely um now so you've been doing this for you know, kind of yourself for how many years now how long is it, have you been out on your own um so I've, I've owned the company i think probably for three or four years and i've been doing it full time for coming up to two years but it all started back with doing like chalk art for Lululemon, which I think started in 2014. Um, so yeah, my background is actually, so I have a bachelor of design in visual communications with a minor in business marketing from the University of Alberta. Um, so it's kind of like a graphic design degree um, with business and marketing built in. And I've done some product design as well. Um, so yeah, long story short, a friend of a friend was looking for someone to do chalkboards at Lululemon. And if you've ever been in them, they have like massive chalkboards that are kind of around like five by three feet and up. Um, but they put them all in the stores and there wasn't really a direct plan, you know, who was to put art on them. So uh, Lululemon Southgate, they eventually hired me and I started doing chalk art on them probably three times a month. And then I started picking up more stores in Edmonton. And then I think at one point I had almost all the stores in Edmonton and then almost all the stores in Alberta. And then I've done some in Maui and then it just kind of spitballed from there. So someone asked me to do a mural and I was like, absolutely had no clue how to do it. Just kind of <laughs> figured it out. Um, uh, now hold on. You said Maui. How did you get to Maui? How did you get? Yeah. To so I would, uh, we vacationed there. So when I was down there, um, with Lululemon, like it started getting more popular for other artists to come in the stores and, uh, do the chalkboards and stuff. So when I was down there, I reached out to them and they were absolutely happy for like me to come in and jazz up their chalkboards. So yeah. Not, not, and then, hey, then you're right off the trip. It's a business trip now, and then you're, <laughs> yeah. you're set. Totally. Um, now, because we, we've talked before, and we've known each other, and um, for quite a few years, um, we, we were joking, and, and for everyone else listening, this is kind of, this is our, our take two. We had technical difficulties the first time around, <laughs> which was completely on my end, but we were talking about this earlier, um, and um, Lululemon was kind of, originally, that was kind of the end goal, was it not for you? You thought that the chalkboard art was going to lead to more opportunities with the corporate role with Lulu. Yeah, like I've never, and I'm not ashamed of telling anyone this at all. I've never kind of been that entrepreneur or had that spirit built within me. Um, I've always been that person, like I always wanted to work for like a bigger corporation and have that security. So before the Lululemon chalkboards, I don't think I've ever really done a chalkboard drawing besides like, you know, as a kid on the street and I, wasn't I wouldn't even consider myself a drawer I've never like I did I avoided painting classes in university as well I thought I'd go into more like a digital marketing realm or art director so at that time I was just excited to have Lululemon on my resume right and then I was like oh maybe this will work me up to like their head office and 
I mean, I wouldn't change my life for the world. I, I love running my company now and uh, being my own boss, right? And doing all that. But yeah, at that time, I just, the goal was kind of like work my way up the ladder and get a spot with Lululemon and kind of have that be my life. But things change and for the better, right? Well, and, and you know, it, it's, um, again, this is a, a, a comment and allusion I made in a recording that we had to redo, but um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a, has a saying where basically his goal was to be in the NFL. And he yeah. even played in the CFL for, I think, one or two games at the Calgary Stampeders, got cut, had seven bucks in his pocket. And that was the best thing that never happened to him is making the yeah. NFL because now he's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. And, and it's like, you're not resentful for it or anything like that. It's just like, there was a reason why that didn't happen. And, you know, things put, uh, you know, fire under your butt for certain reasons. Right. So, um, yeah, no, I'm happy. Like things played out how they played out. Right. And like, w- would have never guessed even five years ago I'd be doing what I do today so so now being this person that's not you know naturally driven to entrepreneurship like you say now that you're an entrepreneur how is it for you how do you find the world of an entrepreneur oh I I think it was like built within me I just didn't want to acknowledge it like my dad runs his own companies too and then my brother was doing his own thing for a while and I you know I think it's uh built within me and like even in high school I we had teachers telling me being like you know, Alex is going to be like the CEO of a company one day. And I was like, you're crazy. Right. <laughs> so I think, you know, everyone else saw it and it was definitely in me. I, I just wasn't acknowledging it for, um, a long while. So I would never work like 16, 18, 20 hours a day. Right. For anyone else besides myself. And, you know, I, I even forget, like some people will stop me when I'm talking and they go, you're just so passionate about it. And I go, I guess that's what that is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's an excitement when I work and stuff. It's like a high almost. So now yeah. what about the, what, what about the uncertainty part of, of running your own business? Like w- when you, when you look at your jobs you want to do now, we were just talking before you've got a job coming up down in Canmore. So you're down there on the weekend. Um, yeah. Like how far out do you book? Like at what, what, at what point do you get nervous? Do you get nervous or is it just kind of coming in? How do you kind of keep feeding the funnel? Yeah. So that next, that one drops down in Banff, but um, it is, like 2020 was supposed to be a really good year. It was looking that way right before COVID hit and stuff like that. Um, a lot of my jobs were tied to like event centers, events happening, large g- gatherings, even offices, a lot of them put on pause. So, I mean, I was at that point in my career, I'm like, okay, things are getting like a steady pace. Right. And I have my clients and they're reaching out to me as much as I'm reaching out to cold calling and stuff. Um, and then a lot of things put on pause and then all of a sudden things start picking up again. And 2020 was actually like my best year yet. And like 2021 is looking that way um, too. So right now I'm, I'm booking about uh, four months out kind of thing. So it just all depends. A lot of them are, they're getting bigger, right? So then instead of it taking up a week or two weeks or a month long project, right? Which is nice. I like that as well. So um, yeah, I mean, like there is those, it comes in waves, right? Like you, you just never know. And like, I would have never expected for myself to be thriving. And today, like, you know, the real weird world that's going on right now. So mm-hmm. very grateful for it. And yeah. And I guess what, like, what was the biggest thing for you to go back from like, you know, getting out of school, being, being new at this, doing, doing the chalkboards to actually like, like launching your business and making this like a, a profession and a career. What were the big things that you really had to kind of like learn that you didn't know that you didn't know? Um, I feel like I want to say everything. Like, like I said, I didn't have that entrepreneurship built into me. So like I was at my daytime job that was graphic design and marketing and they were aware of what I did on the side and, you know, super supportive family. So, and I, I slowly, like I tried pushing the limits, like how much can I hold on to this job while I do my other thing? Right. So, you know, I take Fridays off and then I went back to three days a week and then I slept on a show home floor in between jobs. I always say like, Um, and that was kind of the breaking point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like something's got to give. Right. So I either got to take that leap and just know there's waves that comes with it, or I just burn myself out balancing. Um, so yeah, learning everything. Like, I mean, you know, even my dad runs a company and my brother did at one point too. And, but it's like his company is different from my company. Right. So as much as you can even talk with other people, it's always going to be like, I have a unique situation, what's going to be best for me. So I feel like I'm always learning, you know, (laughs) I look back at things I did before and I'm like, Oh, some of it was right. And then some of it probably could have done a different way, but um, yeah, no, it's just, like I said, learning every day. I, that's about it. (laughs) Well, I I think, you know, 
as, as a kid, I think we always think we're going to get, get it. I got a school. I don't need to learn anymore. We're going to know yeah. it all and know enough. And you know, you, you find out very, very quickly that you're basically learning until the day you die. And so. Oh, a hundred percent. And then I'm in like the art where, I mean, some artists, they just paint, uh, let's say dogs and that's all they paint. Right. Whereas, uh, coming from my background in market design, marketing and graphic design, I really like working with my clients to figure out what's best for them, right? So I'm painting everything from supplement stores to uh, gyms, to offices, to educational facilities, to hair salons, right? So my subject matter is all over the map and it's, it's fun that way for me. It's like problem solving. Usually a client comes to me and is like, hey, can you include A, B, Z, but with this type of twist on it? And to me, it's just like trying to figure out a puzzle. So even with work, it's you're forever learning. And I'm, I'm glad I'm not like in the books learning, but yeah. yeah. No, ex explain more about that process. Like when, when a client hires you or brings you in for a consult, like how much of it is their idea? Or do you have cl basically clients coming in and say they, they want something, they have no idea what they want and they give you like hundred percent just to go with it. Like what is it? Is it a mixture? It's a mixture. It all depends. Like some people definitely have a clear vision right and I've definitely been hired by certain ones where it's like the architect here is the design and you know please paint exactly what I gave you right can someone already design this and that's totally fine I just make that very clear when I post about it right that the design was given but most of them like I would say 90% of them are client comes to me and they're like hey this is kind of what we're going for can you play off of these colors and include you know, something from our logo or branding and put it together. Um, yeah, a lot of times I collect a bunch of photos for them just so they get an idea or I tell them to, you know, provide me with some photos just so I, it's really hard trying to read someone's mind, right? Just putting some visuals on the table helps a lot. So, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, please continue. Oh no, that's, that's good. Oh. Yeah. What I was going to say is, um, we work with, with interior designers to help design and build dental clinics and lay out dental clinics. And that's either from a, a fresh start build up or sometimes you're, you're renovating a space. And there's been kind of a joke or so maybe on our side of the business, the supply side where you could walk into a dental clinic built within a certain era and you could basically pick the designer because yeah. they all look the same. And yeah. oh, 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 like, oh, Mike did this one or, or Sally did this one because they have the, those designer flares that they just kind of, they ran with. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to other designers who said that you know, the sign of a true, a really good designer is to like, you want to walk into the space and not know who designed it because who designed it doesn't really matter. It's, it's designed for these people, for the client. Yeah. And I'm assuming it's kind of the same way in your, or in, in your art, is it, do you want that, you know, that, that Alex Jade flair on it? Do you want that to be recognized as an Alex Jade piece? I think like for the longest time I had a, a hard time being like, I don't really have a style. Or I don't have this. And the more I look at my stuff, there is a particular look, like it's a lot of bright, bold colors. There's the crispness to it, um, kind of like a trick of an eye illusion sometimes. So I'm getting more to like a certain style when I do certain stuff, but then the next time someone hires me for something completely different, right? Um, I think it's like to the quality. I like people, you know, they won't ever say really like, it's the quality that brought us in, but it's like that bright boldness, something about the artwork is drawing them in and people are recognizing it's my stuff, but it's not just like, here's a tiger on everyone that I painted. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the double dragon or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the given. Um, no, this is, this is fantastic. And like, again, like I, we, we used to bump into each other all the time at the gym and I'm, you'd kind of tell me your story as you were doing the, uh, the pieces at Lululemon, then you started going out and doing more of this stuff. And so I just think it's been a, a really cool ride and obviously see yourself all over Instagram and Facebook. And so, um, I, I, now what about like, what do you use for inspiration? Like, are, are there social media people that you follow that you kind of, or like business people that you kind of look to for, for advice or for leadership, or is it just kind of, are you soldiering on, on your own? Do you kind of have this true um, North that you follow? I, I feel like sometimes I'm so, I mean, we're always looking for like inspiration, right? So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm soldiering on on my own, but there's always influence around, right? And I'll see tits and tats of things, right, that I like to pick up from other ones. Um, there's no particular artist that I'm like, oh, I love what they're doing. I'm going to model right after. No, like I even, um, the way I run myself, I run myself a little bit different than most artists, right? I, I run as a business first and an artist second, I say, and, you know, it should be the common thing, but it's, it's not sometimes. Um, so, yeah, just finding that. 
that like the fact that I, I love working back and forth with my clients right whereas some artists just have their style um so I'm very versatile in that way so even finding comparatives myself I haven't found you know 10 hundred other ones like myself right so uh just trying to do like a niche market right but yeah there's I mean I feel like you pick up things from everyone right mm-hmm well, and you, you talked about like business first and art, and art second. Like you know, we've we've all heard of the analogy of like the, the, the starving artist, and yeah. and and you know, like you know, I, I don't think you want to be the starving artist, and I, I don't I, like really like I think the business has to come first because again, whether you're you know a dentist and you know treating a patient and you're treating someone medically, you're still running a business, paying rent, paying overhead, and and you you're still buying supplies, you're investing your time, and whether whether it's actually producing the work or whether it's planning it, so. Well, yeah, you need to be compensated yeah. for it. Um, and I mean, I didn't even didn't even think mural li- making a living off of murals was a thing for the you know as a kid. Never even thought murals even knew what they were. And I still come across people that are like, "You do what for a living?" And I'm like, "I paint murals." And I kind of have to explain like it's you know it's like graffiti, but not really. And then they um, you know then they understand. So I have to remind myself like even the word mural isn't as much as it's a common word for me and people in my circle, right? It's still not, graffiti is more of a common word, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and like I, mural art, it's it's coming on an uprise, right? And people are understanding more. Like I always say, I'm giving you guys art, but it's, it's a marketing tool, right? Like it's gonna help enhance your space and make something unique, right? But have that hand quality touch, even though let's say, Bob, you don't own the business, but you hired someone to make a hand quality touch on your walls, right? So they bring that that sense back to you, right? That you, that hand quality, so. No, I, I think, uh, and I, I see pros and cons. And like, let, let's, let's, let's discuss it. Let's ask yeah. the question. Like, I guess, you know, if I, I, you know, actually, do you do paintings? Do you actually do canvas art? Yeah, so I do everything. So um, hand painted murals is, you know, I would say like number one, the main thing um, I do, custom canvases for people as well. I still do chalk art. So whether it be like on a chalkboard or like 3D chalk art was really popular. Yeah. So just going on the streets and popping up um, window art. So instead of doing like vinyl on your windows, um, basically it's like an advertising form to do like a front window display for you. Um, everything just to like art consulting. And then I still do, um, like I am a graphic designer by trade. So, I mean, there is a the job I'll do that for, but right now just not offering the service. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, well, like, um, I think a wall mural, like the one you described, like the one the outdoors, like the, the 70 by 30 foot, you know, it's a great way to revitalize kind of a, a, a downtown area, an older building, oh, trying to bring co- color to it, to a space. Um, it's probably in, in regards to building a new building, an inexpensive way to revitalize a space outdoors. Um, but at the same time, I, I, do people, are, are they concerned at all? Like, you know, I'm going to put this painting on, but I'm only got, I only got like a 10 year lease. I'm going to leave. Like, would they prefer a piece that they could hang on a wall and take with them or what's the yeah so I mean there's pros and cons of it and like we discuss it you know we go through all the logistics of that and at the end of the day um there's just something different about painting on the wall whether it be interior or exterior that they typically know they're going to be in that space for a while right and even if they we do paint a canvas in your next space that canvas could not fit you know the vibe you're going for right so there's pros and cons of each ones. Um, a lot of times the canvases are more for like private homes um, for homeowners, right? And then they're built specifically for a certain wall. But um, yeah, the, the murals, it, like I said, they just, something about them is different, right? Like it draws people in. Well, and I, I, part of it has to be the size of it. Just when, it, when it's yeah. an entire wall and it's like, you know, eight, 10 feet, 15 feet high, whatever it is, like it has to be just like the scope, the magnitude. Um, no, I, I just think it's, again, and, and you're absolutely right. Like, you know, if you said to me, and even though I know you, it's like, yeah, I, I, I make a living, you know, painting murals. It just sounds like such a, a bizarre yeah. thing, but hey, it, it's a thing and it's working for you and you're, and you're great at it. So um, no, I think it's just, I think it's an amazing story. So um, now, you, you've, now you've been to Maui so far to kind of, you did one, one some chalk workout in Maui. Like what's the next, um, how far have you traveled otherwise? Is it has been... Uh, So yeah, the goal basically is just to have a home base and be traveling places. So flowing by clients. So that's kind of the goal. So the States is the the next goal to get down there and kind of break into that market. It'll happen. So yeah. 
And are you doing anything to kind of make inroads into that market? I know and right now travel is, you know, hindered and, and tough and you're probably really planning to do this, you know, once COVID's gone and lifted and we're, yeah. but like, have, you, have, you, have you made inroads already or what's kind of the plan there? Yeah, I have some inroads and in work and I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid to get cold called to, you know, get shut down. Like my mom always jokes, she goes, you're really good at getting doors slammed in your face. Cause I'm like, she may, and she means in a good way that I have to take like 50 different entries, you know, to get the right one. But to me, I'm like, if someone shuts me down, cool, like that's fine. I'll move on and I'll try someone else in your company even. Right. So, um, yeah, to me, I'm like, like I said, not afraid to have a phone hung up on me or an email not answered. And at least I know I tried, right. Tried getting in there. So yeah, that's, I, I don't like to sit and wait for the opportunities. There's no point in that, right? You got to make them happen. So absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it's, sales is, is a tough gig and sales yeah. is often kind of looked at it as, as a, as a, as a dirty thing. And people think of it being sold when, you know, really like, and I'm biased cause I'm in the sales racket too, but like, we're really trying to, we have, we have solutions for people and we're trying yeah. to show our solution. And of course we think our solution is the best solution or a great solution because we offer it and we, no one wants to offer a bad solution, but no, you're, you're trying to, you know, solve problems, trying to connect people, put people, people in touch and, and Hey, really nothing happens in this world without a sale happening to someone, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whether it's the, the person you date, whether it's like, you know, what you choose to wear or dress or buy, like you're being sold all the time. What, and you know, bring this back to dentistry, like the treatment that you are being prescribed, like, again, you, the patient needs to understand why they're, why they're accepting it. You're, there, there is a selling and education component to that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think we have anything to be um, shy or embarrassed about in regards to uh, selling ourselves. So that, that's, uh, that's very cool. Um, yeah. And I mean, like everyone, it doesn't matter like what business everyone's trying to look at something to set themselves apart. Right. And, you know, enhance themselves to a different level. Right. So that's why I feel like handcrafted stuff's coming back to light. Right. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Even coming from like a digital background, I, I would have never guessed, you know, that murals would be such a great hit. And I mean, I love painting them, so I can't complain, but yeah, even from like my background, I, I never really thought this would be, where things would be leading to. So no, no, is there any concern that like, this is, um, murals are, are a fad or then in, 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 in five, 10 years or less, they're going to kind of go away again, or is it, I, I don't think so. So like in the States, there's been more longevity of it, right. In Canada, um, it's starting to pick up more. Uh, so it's everywhere in the world. And I feel like even with this year, like 2020, um, art there's been more attention brought to it because people couldn't travel and like they needed something else to appreciate and take their mind off things so I feel like there's been like a spotlight put on art right and people at home you know what are they going to do so then they start painting and there's just like a newfound found appreciation for it that you know I didn't even see coming and I got hired for a project this summer to basically pop up places and do street art so I do like chalk art on the street that's 3d so it looks like it's coming off the ground and people are just stop and they're just like, this just made my day, you know, and like a really crappy time that's going on in the world, like something just made them smile, right? And they they were happy for that. And like, I would have regulars to kind of be going out almost like every other weekend, you know, people that would come by and they'd come hunt me down and they'd know I'd be where I'd be making art. So it's just like a little bit of magic people found, so. No, that's very cool. And, and yeah, this past year, and like really, if you look at the calendar right now, we're coming up on yeah. a year exactly of, of COVID, which is, which is mind blowing. It's crazy. <laughs> It is. And yeah, no, we, we needed that, that, that release, that something to kind of, you know, take your, your mind off of it. Um, because again, and I was just talking to a, a client before we got on and she's basically just officially done. She's like, Bob, if you want to come over for dinner, come over for dinner. Like I just like, I, yeah. and, and she, just cause we're just tired and fatigued. And so we needed to find a release and, you know, I'm sure people, some people took the destructive releases. Um, but you know, a, a constructive release, like you know, finding and appreciating art, or whether it was, I know my family, we did a, a lot more camping and stuff yeah. that we hadn't done uh, before. So it was, that was a great release for us, uh, because otherwise, if you're just sitting around in the doom and gloom of what's going on, it's just it's, it's hard on on everybody. So yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, hey, Alex, like, is there anything else we've been touched on that you wanted to kind of bring up? Like, I definitely want to again plug your social media before we go, but. Um, I know I, I like your story. I think you're awesome and amazing. I just wanted to kind of have you on here just for diversity of conversation, but is there anything else you wanted to kind of bring up that we haven't touched on? 
Yeah, no, I honestly, I think we covered most of it, Bob, and I appreciate you having me on here. Even though I'm not in the dental field, I feel like, you know, the art that I provide and the marketing there, it could be up in a dental place one day, right? And I've, I've done consultations with dental clinics too. So um, yeah, it's more about looking at art more than just art sometimes, right? Just thinking about, it's all about creating an atmosphere, even in like a dental clinic, right? So whether it be canvases that do that or even a mural on the wall. So uh, just taking that like outer look at art, right? That it's, yeah, it's more than just art that it offers too. But no, I'm like really happy you're able to, have me on here and discuss a bit so yeah and it's been great to catch up we found out that we're now neighbors and yeah. we uh, haven't really seen each other for well over a year now because of covid yeah. but we're, we're now apparently neighbors um but and yeah and you know like this the purpose of this of this podcast is it isn't really to sell it's to it's to educate I, yeah. I think your work would be fantastic in a clinic it needs to you need to find the right office the right people and you know and they need to mesh with you um, and you with them, but like I think it'd be a, a really cool um, for someone who's looking to spruce up an office and kind of have a very local and a personal touch. I think it'd be a great option. And again, I just think um, just I just wanted to share your story. So um, I appreciate you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for rescheduling. Uh, that was uh, it was no frustrating worries. last time and embarrassing on my part. But um, again, so Al Alex with an I. So Alex yeah. Jade, uh, AlexJade.ca. Uh, alexandrajade.ca and then Instagram is at Alexandra Jade and then Facebook would be Alexander Jade Art and Design Co. All right, perfect. And what I will do is I will, I'll take those links and I'll include those in the show notes. And when I send an email, I'll include them in the email as well. So anyone has any questions, please guys check out Alex. Your stuff's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. So Alex, thanks again and thanks. bye for now. Okay. See ya.